Sanctuary. We'll get started this evening. Hymn number 138 tonight. Hymn 138, Oh Come All Ye Faithful. Hymn 138. It and uh, hey, listen, Christmas Day, and so many people have decided to leave Christ out of Christmas, and that uh, kind of seems backwards, doesn't it? And uh, so I'm glad you did not, and uh, I'm glad you decided to be here this evening, and good to see you. And uh, we come to adore Him, and to rejoice, and to praise Him, and worship, and honor Him every time we meet together. And uh, so glad we did as well. Here in a little bit, we'll have a uh, time where we're going to read the Christmas story to all the kids that care to gather up towards the front. And uh, we'll read the Christmas story to you uh, from the Word of God here just a little bit. So parents, just let you know of that. So that way you can already, you know, be pushing your kids out the aisle and uh, preparing. And uh, so well, I'll be here just uh, right after the offering uh, here in a little while. But we're glad to see you this, e this evening. Hope you had a wonderful day. And aren't you enjoying the white Christmas outside? Yeah, yeah, this is, this is a Texas Christmas, right? Nice 70 degrees, getting the air conditioner on, and uh, hey, listen, if it was either this or six inches of snow, I'll take this. And because uh, in Texas, the snow stays for a little bit, then it turns into ice, and uh, it just gets worse from there. So thank God for what he's given us, right? Let's pray, ask for his blessings upon our evening service, and uh, as we pray, uh, we just want to honor him and for all that he's done for us, and very grateful to do so. Brother Gordon, would you ask the Lord to meet with us tonight? Amen. You can be seated there, and uh, just to give you just a couple announcements, and then we'll have our services here uh, to this evening, just as normal and or well as normal as can be, right? And uh, <laughs> looking forward to uh, what the Lord should do today. But now, let me remind you as well that uh, with uh, with the different uh, New Year coming around and in, uh, January coming up uh, next Saturday, not not this coming Saturday, but the Saturday after that, uh, will be Family Saturday, and so there will be no organized soul winning that Saturday. Food Day will be uh, the Sunday the fifth, and so make sure you're prepared for that. Let me also 
remind those of you that will be here on January 1st, and we'll have our New Year's uh, uh, church service on Wednesday night, and uh, we'll have uh, just uh, some shotgun preaching. So for those of you men that wish to preach, the sign-up sheet is in the foyer, and ask that you sign up no later than Sunday uh, so we can go and build the schedule for that. So if you have not yet signed up, uh, now is the time to do that. And so that's for our New Year's Day uh, service. That's Wednesday night, January 1st, and we're looking forward uh, to that evening uh, service uh, together. And uh, let me also uh, let you know that Saturday we plan on going soul winning at 10.30, uh, this Saturday at 10.30. Now they're calling right now, I think it was 60% chance of rain, and I saw it turn into 80% chance, and Brother Chad and I were just looking at it a minute ago, it's 90% chance of rain in the morning, and that's when it's always got to rain, right? So if it's pouring down rain, obviously we, uh, we won't be going out uh, Saturday morning, but uh, if it's not, come and join us at 10.30 as we go out and try to witness uh, for Christ and uh, tell others about him, and then invite them to come and be a part of our services. And so, man, also our prayer meeting will be on schedule tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. And so if you want to come join us with that, uh, again, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, we will have our normal prayer meeting. And so just letting you know of those things coming up and uh, looking forward to uh, the just kind of ending out the year. And uh, our goal has been uh, since the beginning of the year, a step beyond. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what our uh, goal has been. And just as we wrap up the year, I wonder, uh, as, have you asked yourself, have I gone a step beyond? Have I, have I grown in any in Christ? Have I, you know, in any area of your life? And I hope the answer is yes. And uh, now, could we all say we've grown in every area of our life? Probably not, right? Probably not. And uh, I don't know any of us that have grown in every area of our life. But look at the, some of those things where maybe you have grown. Find encouragement in that and, and continue to try to grow in the other areas even as we move into the new year. Uh, let me encourage you this. Don't get to January 1st and go, well, done with that theme. And so I'm, I don't need to grow anymore for Christ. And uh, on to the next one, right? And uh, that's not the right mindset of it. And so let me encourage you just continue to try to grow in Christ. That's what the scripture teaches, that we grow in our, in our knowledge and our faith in Christ. And we're grateful for that opportunity to do so. We'll take your hymn book now, hymn number 142, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And so I'm glad that as the scripture taught where Christ would be born, I'm glad it actually happened in the way the scripture said, right? And so hymn number 142, grab your hymn book there, and let's sing again. Amen. Hymn 142, O Little Town of Bethlehem, lift it up together. O Little Town of Bethlehem.
going to be able to give unto the Lord. Somebody said, well, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to give this time of year. I've done spent all that I had. A wise thing to do here, let me help you. Don't do that. And uh, be wise of what you spend. And, uh, you know, if you uh, protect yourself from that. And, uh, you know, sometimes this world, with its marketing and its genius uh, way of putting pressures upon you, can cause us to spend money we do not have for things we do not need. And so be very careful of that. And so very, very grateful for what God has given us. And uh, even as we consider, we know December 25th is not Jesus' birthday, right? It wouldn't line up with Scripture anyways. And, uh, it, it, and so we definitely know that. We don't know what, when his exact birthday is as far as the date. And the, some have uh, legend and, and, and folklore would say maybe this day or that day. And, uh, but we don't know when it is. But we do know he was born. Right, and, and history even records uh, how much he changed everything. And uh, for those that oppose him, you know, there's enough written history books about him for those even that are non-religious, right? And uh, so we're definitely glad to know that he was born. And I personally believe he was born exactly as the Bible said, born of a virgin in the right place at the right time. And, uh, and he came for the right reason. He didn't just come to minister, but though he did come to minister, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And uh, that was me. And I uh, thank God I'm not lost anymore. Amen. And uh, grateful for that. Well, while we know today is not Jesus' birthday, it is Brother Matthew's birthday. And uh, so that's what all the festivities is really about. And uh, everybody's excited because Brother Matthew's had a birthday. And I'm so great. Got your day off. Yeah. Amen. And uh, yeah, Brother Matthew's was born. It was so traumatizing that um, like everybody got the day off. And uh, so <laughs> whatever works, as long as we have a day off, right? Amen. Well, Brother Matthews, would you ask the Lord to bless our offering tonight, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity again to be in your house, Father, to uh, honor your birth. Lord, we know you had to come in order to die. Uh, Father, we thank you for that. Lord, I just pray that you bless this offering. It's the gift of the giver. Lord, also pray that you give us uh, wisdom to spend it wisely. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.
Well, eventually we're going to get her some piano lessons, and uh, that might help. And so, amen. Well, kids, come on and gather around, and uh, we're going to read to you the Christmas story here. And so if any of the kids want to gather around, pray for some. We know that uh, some have uh, messaged us earlier today and said that they were uh, ill with uh, the flu. And uh, you can go and come on up. Y'all can sit around even up here. You can even sit on the floor even. Come on, you come on down. It's okay. I'm going to sit down here too. And uh, so, but pray for those. There's some that are out, some dealing with the flu and uh, others running fevers and such and uh, others on the road traveling, but uh, we're glad for those that are able to be here uh, even during this Christmas. And uh, come on now, come on now, kids. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, <laughs> there you go. And so there's another kid. Any other kids? Audrey, you want to come? To Lexi, come on down. It's all right. Yeah, you go ahead. And uh, hey, come on down, Brother Chad. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Hey, come on. Now, y'all laugh, but I... Brother Smith did this when I was, uh, when my kids were young and, and uh, I came down with my kids and I sat down one time and he looked at me like I was silly, but hey, I'm a kid at heart and so I'm okay with that. And uh, so we're grateful to be able to, uh, to, to read the Christmas story. So as we gather around to, tonight and uh, listen, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of festivities, a lot of people excited about days off of work, days off of school and uh, gifts and, and decorations and, and so on and so forth. A lot of things said about Christmas and uh, what Christmas is. And sometimes if we're not careful, we as children and even as adults, we forget what truly what, what we're supposed to be thinking about. Christmas is not about gifts, it's not about trees, it's not about decorations, it's not about days off of work or days off of school. What we're supposed to be thinking about is the coming of our Savior. Amen. He was the gift that came for us. And uh, now as I read to you from the Word of God what that first Christmas was, and I know we read it during our Christmas party, but we're going to read it again and for our kids' Christmas party. And, uh, but we're going to read it again. It's okay, you can read it as many times as you want, right? And uh, that, that very first Christmas, it wasn't called Christmas at the time, and, uh, but that very first Christmas, it was not a day of festivities, it was not a day of celebrations for this world, but it was a very exciting day, a very exciting time in, in the history of man. The Bible says this, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the of the house and lineage of David. And he went to be taxed with Mary, his spouse, wife, being great with child. And uh, so she was about to have a baby. Can you imagine that? And so there it was, and the Bible says, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding, uh, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. Can you imagine being out there in the middle of the night watching sheep, and all of a sudden the skies light up with angels? Yeah, I'd be scared too, right? And uh, our first thought would not be, oh, the angels are here to talk to me, right? I, I'd have been very scared. But the, the, they were there, they were so afraid, and the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. I'm glad they said that, right? It's for all people, not just select people, but all people. And, uh, and then uh, this is what he said, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Not only did they know where he was going to be born, they knew where he was going to be at in the city he was going to be born. They even knew what he was wearing. Yeah, wrapped in swaddling clothes. They knew where he was lying. Lying in a manger, right? And so, uh, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. 
And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, just like they said. It's amazing. You know what? When God says something, it always happens just like he says, right? It always does. And, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which is told them concerning this child. And, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. And when it was told unto them, and when the eight days uh, were accomplished, uh, for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was, well, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, I want to flip forward, or actually backward here in, in the Bible, but flip to another verse of Scripture where it tells us a little bit more about the birth of Jesus. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. So the shepherds came to worship him. And now here these, these wise men, they wanted to come and worship him too. And when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written, by the prophet. It's amazing that those all the way in the east, not the priest and not the scribes knew, but those who were supposed to know didn't know. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And then it says, uh, and, and thou, uh, it was written of the prophet, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, and, and uh, that shall rule my people Israel. There in Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, is what the Bible says. Not baby. Is he in a manger right now? No, I'll show you in a moment. And he said, Look for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Do you all think Herod really wanted to worship Jesus? What do y'all think he wanted to do, Jackson? What do you think he wanted to do with Jesus? You have any idea? You're not sure? Josie, what do you think Herod wanted to do with Jesus? You don't know? Joseph, you're the next. Kill him. Yeah, he, he didn't want to worship Jesus. How do we know? Well, well let's continue reading. When they had heard this, the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Now notice this, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, where, were the, where did the shepherds go? In the stable. Where did they find Jesus? In a manger. Where did the wise men find Jesus? In a house. So if you ever wonder why our wise men are way far away and Jesus is over here in the manger, because they hadn't quite made it yet. Right now, I know they're in the west and they're supposed to be in the east, but our building's facing the wrong way. And so, <laughs> blame it on the building. It's not the wise men's fault. They're just taking a long way around, right? And so, that's what's going on. So, that's why our wise men are away. How many of y'all have ever seen the, the, the pictures of Jesus when he was born with the wise men by Jesus? Yeah, but you know what? They weren't there the day he was born. And so, they found him in the house and they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented, him, uh, uh, presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. By the way, how many wise men were there? Anybody know? Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Jackson? A bajillion. <laughs> That's a lot of wise men. And uh, anybody else have a guess? Yeah. Hey, we know they're wise men. So that's at least plural. There's more than one, right? But we don't know how many. And uh, now many would speculate. Some people say three because there's three gifts. But for them to travel from the east the way they did, they probably had a large entourage because it's very dangerous to travel by yourself in this day. So there could have been a lot of them. We don't really know. The Bible doesn't tell us. And so it, 
obviously doesn't matter, does it? And so, and, uh, but it says these wise men being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their, into their own country another way. See, that's why they're in the West. They went a different direction. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child, and here's what God said, to destroy him. You see, that's how we know that. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. And he was there unto the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Then Herod when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. What does wroth mean? Anybody know? Anybody want to guess besides Joseph? Any, any big kids back there want to guess? He's angry. He's angry. There you go. Good job, big kids. And uh, gotta, hey, but Joseph's got to give the big kids a chance to answer too. And uh, he's angry. He's very wroth. And uh, it says that he, he was very wroth and he sent forth, and notice this, and he slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under. Why do you think he picked two years old? Okay. Anybody else? What do you think, Melody? He's two years old. Okay. How do you know he's two years old? That's what you were going to say. <laughs> she stole your answer, right? Hey, remember the, uh, the, the king, Herod, had asked the wise men when they saw the star. He had asked, when did you see the star? How long have you been traveling? And so for as long as he knew, hey, since God had sent forth a message to the wise men, he went from the very far extreme to the very youngest and said, all of those babies, we're going to kill them. Jackson, what if you were one of those babies? That wouldn't be good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Although James might, might think otherwise, but uh, no, that, it's your little brother. You don't want him dead. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, that, that's a, that was a sad day sad day in Bethlehem that Herod would do such a wicked thing. And, uh, and so he says, uh, and, and then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying in Ramah there was a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. That was a very sad day. But when Herod was dead, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared, appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought to take the young child's life. And he arose, and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. By the way, kids, I want to teach you something here. It's important, verse 21. Notice, even the angel said to Joseph, Take the young child and his mother. Never said, Hey, you as his father. Some of these new Bibles say the mother and father. Joseph wasn't his father. Who was Jesus' father? God. God's the father, not Joseph. And so, and so he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Ar uh, Archelaus did reign in, Ju in Judea in the room of uh, his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now he was called a Nazarene, but was he a Nazarite? It's something for you to learn once you get a little bit older. He wasn't a Nazarite. Why was he called a Nazarene? Because he lived in Nazareth, right? And then not because he was a Nazarite, but because he lived in Nazareth. Just like if you live in Sanger, you're a Sangerite, and uh, Sangerite, and uh, and if you if you're gonna live in Sanger, not only are you a Sangerite, but you need a Sangerite. Okay, so hey, the Bible teaches us that that's how Jesus was born. And, and listen, all that story, every bit of it's true. Every bit of it's true. A lot of the things that people think about when it comes to Christmas, that's not true. But what the Bible says is true. Jesus did come. Now it wasn't December 25th. But he did come, and he was born of a virgin, and he did live a perfect life, and he did die for us, and he rose again, didn't he? You glad for that? Amen. I am too. And he did that so we could be saved. And so pray, praise the Lord for that. So, hey, when we think of Christmas, let us not forget what Christmas truly is. 
it's not all the festivities, it's not presents, it's not trees, it's not decorations, it's not, it's not all the things that this world focuses on. What is it truly about? The birth of Jesus. And he wasn't born this day, but we know he was born, right? We know he was. Hey, the story of Jesus is not fake. It's real. It's real. And so when somebody, hey, when somebody is, is, is celebrating Christmas, hey, that's a great, easy opportunity for you to ask them, do you know what Christmas is really about? And you can tell them. And when they go, oh, yeah, it's about presents. Can you, be, can you have a great Christmas without presents? Yes. yes. Can you have a great Christmas without decorations? Yes. Without parties? Yes. Without seeing a bunch of people? Yes, you can. And uh, amen. Some people really like that a lot, don't they? Hey, because that's not what Christmas is about. And so if we're not careful, even as kids, all of us adults, we remember times when we were kids when all we would think about for Christmas was presents. And we shouldn't. We should think about Jesus. And that's all throughout life. We should think about what he has done for us. And so kids just wanted to read to you the Christmas story from the Word of God. In Luke chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 2, that's where we find it. It's in the Bible, and every bit of it is true. All right. Speaking of singer right, Brother Seaford, if you can get up, we're going to sing it right one more time. on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, they could be playing these bells and things, and still this was going on. And he comes to verse 4, and he gives us the answer in verse 4. We're not going to sing verse 5. We're just going to stop at verse 4, because I think it's a good place to stop tonight. And well, then the pastor will come preach. But look at those words there. Sing them out. Think about the words that are written there for us tonight. M 143, on the fourth verse, this will be our last tonight. They Thank the Lord for his precious word that tells us that the Lord's desire was peace on earth and goodwill to men, and it would only come by the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we'll take a few moments tonight, and, uh, and Matthew chapter 2 is our text, and actually the entire chapter, we just read it to you, and uh, you didn't stand in honor of God's word while I read it to you, but I just read it to you, and I'm just teasing you for just a moment uh, as we were reading to the kids. And uh, so just by way of remembrance, as we read it, we understand that we, we mentioned to you this. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he 
that is born King of the Jews. And from the Matthew chapter 2, as we'll look at the rest of the text here momentarily, notice the, these wise men had come and, and they're seeking after the King of the Jews. And what might I say tonight, we're just going to just want to bring to remembrance a, a thought uh, for, for this Christmas season and, and for our lives. This thought, hallelujah, the King is coming. Hallelujah, the King is coming. And can you just imagine for a moment the being alive on this day when Jesus was born? A day and time when Israel was under Roman rule, a day and time when the Jews uh, had not their own nation. And listen, oftentimes they were looking for their Messiah, they were looking for their King to come. And, and, and this was the King that was, that was born this day. However, He was not born for the reason they were looking. He wasn't born to, to drive Rome out. He wasn't born to, to reestablish the nation. He wasn't born to establish a millennial reign at that time. But he was born for a purpose of, reach, uh, of, of seeking and saving those who were lost, of which every person is lost until they're saved. But consider this thought for a moment. Hallelujah. Hey, praise the Lord. The King is coming. These wise men came to Herod and they said, hey, uh, we, we, we've seen the star in the east and we're looking for him. And where is this king of the Jews? And in chapter 2 of, uh, of the book of Matthew, as Matthew writes to the Jew, talking about the Messiah and the king of kings and the Lord of lords, I want you to consider three thoughts from this chapter. First of all, hey, I want you to see as we read the beginning text uh, of chapter 2, I want you to see the homage to the king. The homage to the king. Notice again it says that, uh, that in the days of Herod, these wise men came from the east, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east and come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And he would have gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together. He demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land, land of Judah, are not uh, uh, the least of, among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. You see, these wise men that came, listen, to, uh, uh, to, to Bethlehem, they came seeking out the king of kings. They came saying, hey, praise the Lord, the king is coming, and, and he's here. They came bringing homage to the king. And I want you to notice, as they traveled, they followed the light that God had given them. They followed the light that God had given them. You understand, listen, uh, from time to time, spiritually speaking, listen, you ought to be growing in Christ, and, and God's going to give you a little bit more light, and a little bit more light, and a little bit more understanding, a little bit more truth. Listen, we have all the light right here in our hands, but you understand, when you began uh, your Christian life, you didn't understand everything in Scripture? Right. Neither did I. Right. Hey, ha has the light ever just come on for you? You ever been reading something? You're like, oh, that's what that means. You see, these wise men, they were wise because they learned to follow the light that God had given them. Hey, when God shows you something, you ought to learn to follow it. When God directs you, you ought to learn to follow that direction. And so, hey, these wise men follow the light that God had given them, but then they confirmed their steps by the Word of God. They didn't just say, oh, look, there's a light in the sky. You understand, they knew that what was going on was, was something supernatural because the Word of God said. They knew they needed to go to uh, Bethlehem. Why? Because it was written by the prophet, they said. Hey, so often we think God has given us light and there's no Bible to back it up. You've got to be careful for that. Right. Hey, we ought to follow like God gave us, but then they confirm their steps by the Word of God. And, and then when God, listen, revealed to them, and just by, for a second time, we won't go back and read it, but when Herod says, hey, you go, and, you go find that child and let me know where he's at because I want to come and worship him. And can you imagine when they finally found him and they're like, oh, there he is. And, and, and they bowed and worshiped and, and they brought their gifts to him. And then I wonder if somebody said, oh, we, we got to go tell Herod. We got to go tell Herod. That, hey, the king wants to come too. But God spoke to them in a dream didn't they? And he says, you need to go a different direction home. Yeah. You know what part of their homage to the king? They obeyed God without question. Hey, they didn't say, well, well, Lord, don't you know the king says we need to come back? Hey, the king wants to worship him too. Lord, don't you know? Listen, he's, he's waiting upon us when God says, hey, you go a different direction. They went a different direction without question. 
Hey, part of their homage was not just bringing their gifts, but it was following God's Word. Hey, listen, no, no questions asked, just doing exactly what God said to do. But at a time when some men were paying homage to the king, there was also, number two, great hatred against the king. When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, uh, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there uh, until I bring word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him, in verse 18. Herod wasn't just content to destroy this child because he was called the king of the Jews. Listen, he wasn't just content to, to seek him out when he realized that he was mocked. Well, listen, we just read it to the kids and we talked to them about it. Hey, he would go into Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof and kill all those children two years and under. How much hatred must be in your heart to put all those innocent children to death? Think about that. This king, Herod, hey, listen, he heard about the king of the kings and, hey, the Lord of lords and the king of the Jews. And, and, and he looked and he, he listened. Hey, his heart was troubled and Jerusalem was troubled. Why? Because they was, he was seen as a threat to the ruling class. You understand those in power don't want to give up power? Let me take a look at Washington, D.C. right now. I mean, man, every, every time somebody tries to, uh, tries to stir things up, I mean, things get all in a tiffy right now. Hey, people in power don't want to let go of their power. And Herod, when he said, oh, it's, <laughs> these wise men came from the east and we heard of the king of the Jews. Hey, he was born in Bethlehem. He, he, he didn't want to worship him. He, he, he despised him and hated him already. Why? Because he didn't want to relinquish his throne. Even though, I mean, think about it for a moment. Nobody ever walked up to Herod and said, Herod, you're losing your throne. Jesus, listen, this little baby never showed up and said, hey, I'm taking over. Joseph and Mary never, listen, they never made any threats. But this king, because there was a possibility that he might lose his authority, he was angry and he hated that child. Mark it down. This world despises Jesus because they don't want to let go of their own lives. They don't want to let go of their sins. They don't want to let go of, of their own rule. They don't want to let go of their power. So much so, listen, this ruling king would mock the worship of the coming king. We read it earlier. Hey, Herod had came privately to these men. Hey, he asked, what time did the star appear? And, and he says, listen, when you find this young child, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. You know what he's doing? He's mocking them. I, I want to worship them also. And how many people to this day mock us serving Jesus Christ? They laugh and they ridicule. And listen, there's a hatred against the king of kings. The reality is, listen, the ruler of this world doesn't want to honor and worship the king. He wants to destroy the king. That's why this world gets upset when you try to make Christ the focus of this last month of the year. They'd rather, hey, they'd rather have their festivities and all their parties and all their gift exchange and all, everything else without ever thinking about Christ. And you mention Christ and you try to redirect their thoughts to Christ. How many folks, listen, get upset and become angry and even to the point, hey, that they'll mock you and ridicule you because of their hatred against the king. We see not only the homage to the king and the hatred against the king, but I find it interesting in the end of this chapter when the king of kings and the Lord of lords, when he shows up, listen, he didn't show up with all this pomp and circumstance. He had every right to walk upon this earth and to say, hey, listen, I created this thing. You're going to bow down and worship. He had every right. He had every right to, listen, uh, to come in and, and all his glory and all his splendor with a host of, of heaven behind him. And listen, he, he shouldn't have been born in a, in a stable. He shouldn't have been placed in a manger. He should have had the best of the best, and he deserves it. For him coming in, but that's not why he came. So I want you to notice thirdly, as the king of kings comes, I want you to notice the humility of the king. You understand, he took off his royal garments in heaven and placed them down. Think about that for just a moment. He laid them down. 
And, and listen, for all our, our, our human minds to, to try to encompass the, the full truth of it, hey, we, we, we think about it in terms we understand. I don't know for sure. I, I, I would think he would wear a crown in heaven as the king of kings. And he would take it off to come to a manger. Hey, his royal scepter that he would maybe carry in heaven. Hey, is showing his, his ruling authority and, and his right to the throne. He would lay it down in such a way that when mankind saw him, there was no beauty about him that we should even desire him, Isaiah said. Nobody looked at him and said, now that's a king. You remember Saul, of, uh, Saul from the Old Testament, King Saul? When it came time to choose a king, they looked at Saul and they said, now that's a king. Hey, he's head and shoulders above everybody else. We want him as king. Nobody picked Jesus to be king. And you understand, he created flesh. So when it came time for him to choose his form that he would come, he could have chosen any form. Yet he chose humility. Hey, as a matter of fact, the Bible says in the New Testament, he chose the form of a servant. The form of a servant. And consider, even what the father would have this family do at the time the king of kings was coming to be born upon this earth. The Lord would ask Joseph to move the family to Egypt. And thus, starting over, I would assume from nothing. You see, Herod wanted to kill the king. And the Lord said, Joseph, get your family, move to Egypt. I don't think he had six months to pack. I don't think he was able to say, Mary, hey, you and Jesus stay here. I'm going I'm to go survey the land. I'm going to go find us a house and I'm going to go find a job. And hey, as soon as I get everything situated in Egypt, I'll come back and get you. And then we'll, you understand, they just had to pack up and go. They didn't have time to rent a U-Haul call the moving truck and the movers to come pack everything up? Could you imagine your family starting over just because of the hatred of your baby boy? Even after the death of Herod, the Lord would come to Joseph again and say, Joseph, time to move your family again. One would think, oh, okay, time to move him to Jerusalem, right? I mean, he's the king of kings. No, I want you to move him to a city called Nazareth. Now, right now, first thought, you're thinking Nazareth. What's the big deal with that? <laughs> you remember the apostle? He asked the question, could any good thing come from Nazareth? What was the mindset of those from Nazareth in that day? What was the mindset of that city of that day? Listen, I'm talking about Jesus came from obscurity to lowly places, and yet he was the king of kings. Instead of having his glory and, and, and his, uh, his splendor behind him, he came from absolutely nowhere. The humility of the king. Why is this important? You understand when you feel like you're at rock bottom and have absolutely nothing? I think Jesus understands. So on this day, when those of us who trust Christ, when we want to pay homage to a king who came from humble places, it's an interesting that the heathen doth rage against this king and all who serve him, do they not? But I ask the question, why? If he's just a figment of our imagination, why are you so upset? You ever had somebody tell you, I'm not going to be controlled by some imaginary guy upstairs going to direct my life, and I'm going to live. <laughs> if he's imaginary, then why are you so upset that I serve him? I mean, I have never, never, never had anybody in my life tell me I, that they're so very upset against Cinderella because she's imaginary. <laughs> right? Well, Cinderella's not telling me how to live. <laughs> I'm not telling you how to live either, but I'm suggesting you might want to live how God said. <laughs> hey, why is it if he's imagining, why do they get so upset if he's not who he is? 
Why do they get so upset if, listen, if, if, if he's make-believe and, and his coming was not really as the Bible says, then why do they get so upset if we say, hey, he was born of a virgin and he was born in a manger, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes, and, and listen, everything happened just like the Bible said. If it's all make-believe, then why are you so upset that I'm saying it happened just like the Bible said? Almost like his word was not true. Then why are you upset? By the way, why are you so upset if he's not truly coming again? You see, the Bible narrative is he came the first time to suffer. But he's coming the next time to take over. That's the Bible narrative. And so, listen, as I serve him and say, hey, he came the first time, and I try to point out, hey, he came, he, al he was alive, he, he lived on this earth, he died, he was buried, he rose again, he's coming back. See, I'm giving him the whole story. We don't serve a baby Jesus. My Savior's not a baby. I remember in Croatia, we were there and walked through some of the Catholic churches that were there, one of the Catholic churches, they had a wall, I mean, massive, massive building. I mean, gold and, I mean, decorations just galore. And on one wall, I've got some pictures of it, there's little baby cherubs everywhere. And I was like, what's with the babies? And they said, um, those aren't just babies. They said, look in the middle. Mary was in the middle, and she's holding a baby. She said, er they said, every one of those is a baby Jesus. And she's the queen of heaven holding the baby. I don't serve a baby Jesus. Uh, my Savior grew up, lived, died, was buried, rose again. He didn't come back as a baby. And he's not coming back to this earth as a baby. Hallelujah. Hey, the King is coming. So if this is all a make-believe story, why are so many people upset about it? Merry Christmas, he said to somebody, and they went, bah! If it's fake, why are you upset? Why are you getting mad at me? You ever met somebody that lives in their own dream world? I've met a lot of people like that. You know what? Let them live in their dream world. If this is a dream world, let me live in it, because it sure has been good. It sure has been good. Hey, it has helped my life. It's helped my family. Hey, it, it's helped me uh, in so many ways that, that, listen, if this is all make-believe, it's worth it. But I'm here to say it's not make-believe. And there's something in the hearts of all of those in this world that caused them to fear when they consider that this king is real and he is coming again. So we see in Matthew chapter 2, not only the homage to the king and the hatred against the king and the humility of the king, but we see in our own hearts we must humble ourselves before the king and give ourselves homage to the king even despite the hatred against the king. You know what? When this world gets upset and angry with me, I ought to humble myself and still lay down my gifts at his feet. And he's not looking for my gold, my frankincense, and myrrh. He's looking for my life, my heart, my strength, my mind, my all. He's looking for yours too. Lord, we thank you for this day you've given us to stop and consider the birth of our Savior. And Lord, how you came to this earth, Lord, how miraculous it was. Our minds cannot truly comprehend how you became flesh and dwelt amongst us. But Lord, we know it's true. Our minds cannot comprehend why you would leave the glories of heaven to come to this wicked world just because you loved us. But we know it's true. Lord, from time to time, we cannot comprehend the events that will transpire when you come back again. But help us to remember it's true. As we rejoice at your first coming, God, help us to look forward to your second. In the meantime, help us to humble ourselves. Pay homage to you. Serve you. Even while this world hates even the mention of this King of Kings, 
Jesus Christ who's loved them more than they can understand. And God, we thank you for that love. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight as the piano plays,